Okay. Hi guys, Loyla Lewis here, parenting and life coach for mothers in training. A couple of people have asked me more questions about homeschooling. So I tried to get my daughter to come on live today to answer some questions about it, but she's on her way out. So guess who I grabbed? <laughs> I grabbed my husband. This is George Lewis. Hi. And he doesn't really know what I'm going to ask him. So this is going to be raw and authentic. But uh, I wanted you to hear what it's like for a husband to be a part of the homeschooling journey. My husband didn't really do a whole lot in terms of the <laughs> education. It was pretty much me early on. but. He supported me the whole way. Uh, hi, Nancy. Yeah, a lot of people are just curious about it, are afraid of it, would like to do it, but, but can't imagine taking that step. And I just want to tell you right at the outset, I was, I was terrified. I didn't think I could do it. Um, I thought, okay, maybe I can do colors and numbers for the first year and then, um, and then that's it. So, but this guy here, every time <laughs> I was ready to quit was just like, I think you can do it. So she could do it. You did do it. Yeah. And you did I a did, great job. I did it for 18 years. Yeah. Just want to say, so everything I'm about to everything we're about to talk about, this is in hindsight. Hindsight is 2020. So you're getting the real deal here. So, George, when I first thought about homeschooling and I brought it to your attention, what was your first reaction to the idea? Well, to be fair, my first reaction was absolutely no way. Um, you know, I thought all this, the typical objections, well, how are they going to make friends? Who are they going to socialize with? But we sent Jonathan to a private school for K-4 for about a week and a half, and we saw a difference almost immediately that we didn't like. He came home and he took his frustrations out on his little brother. So we decided to pull him out of school, and you said you would... I took all the work. I just right, said... she took all the books. We paid for everything. This was a private school, so we had paid for everything. So Loyla took everything and said she would do that part. Um, and it went really, really well. So then was I was, amazing. then she was like, at one point you didn't want to continue. You were nervous. And I was like, no, you're great at this. You can do this. You can do this. So that's how we ended up having it continue for 18 years. And one of the key pieces of homeschooling is that you don't have to know it all. All I knew that I could do was teach colors and numbers and the ABCs. And then what I realized is that the next year, you're just adding just a little bit more onto that. You know, and heck, who can't add just a little bit more onto that? Right. And the kids were always asking questions and it was so nice to just be able to explain to them from my perspective or to go out and learn about the stars and the earth and count jelly beans and carrots. Make homemade maple syrup. We, we made homemade maples. I went outside and tapped my tree to t show the kids how to make maple syrup. Um, okay, so let me ask another question that you might be asking uh, about homeschooling. So what were some of the what were some of the hardest aspects of homeschooling from your perspective? Um Gee, you know, I mean, to be fair, I didn't do much. I supported you. I worked, you know, 8, 10, sometimes 12 hours a day and, and just tried to be, you know, the emotional and, and support for everything. I think the hard, hardest part, um, oh, man. The income. You know, right, because you weren't working. Yeah, we lived I, on one, we lived on one, one income. income in North Jersey, you know, it with was a mortgage hard. and taxes. And yeah, I, I think that would probably have be the, the toughest part for me was the stress of knowing, man, I got to bring the money in. There's no, you know, we can't take a little bit of your salary because there wasn't one. So, yeah, that would have been that. Yeah. And we had no money put away. <laughs> yeah. We were living on a shoestring budget. I raised a family of six in a home with one bathroom, 
three children shared one bedroom for a while. It yep. was difficult, but we did it and nobody yeah. really suffered. Nobody no. nobody no. suffered. No, nobody suffered. And the big advantages are because I was self employed if we had an opportunity to go away for a weekend or do something, we could all go because kids didn't have to be back for school on Monday. We could school them wherever we were. And that was huge. That freedom is amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. If you hate crowds, homeschooling is the way <laughs> to go because right. you don't stand on lines for anything because right. you go off season for everything. Yep. And in, term of the, in terms of the academics, the kids... I would give them their books if they happened to be using a book and we would sit down together when they were really little and I would read to them and they would color pictures having to do with geography or yeah. whatever the science study was or you know writing little short stories like we all did it all together. I, and I, I want to just say something about the socialization you know in public school Every kid who's, you know, 10 years old is in the same class together. Every, you know, every kid that's 11, 12, whatever. And that's not real life. When you get a job, you know, you've got people that are younger than you. You've got people that might be 30, 40 years older than you when you start your first job. And with homeschooling, you know, because of co-ops and things like that, your kids are associating with kids of different ages. The parents are more involved. I feel that kids learn to be much more respectful to adults because they're involved with, adult, with adults. And again, they're involved with kids that are younger and older. So you start to see, like we recognize in some of our kids, nurturing of younger kids. They'd be in a group and, and our kids would be looking out for the little kids and taking care of them and bringing them along and making sure they were included. But they also had the advantage of, of you know, wanting to kind of compete and, and be with the older kids, you know, the, the cooler kids, whatever. Um, but in a really healthy way, not like cliques in school, you know, in the public school, but in, in a way where, you know, it's other families, other friends in various ages and, and the, the amount of respect that you see in homeschooled kids is very impressive. Huge. So not disres no disrespect on public school right. whatsoever, right. whatsoever. We went to public school. We, we went to public <laughs> yeah. school. Um, so we were like trailblazers in our family. <laughs> right. They hated us at first for doing it. So if you're thinking about homeschooling, be ready to be hated on. But that's okay. The, the proof is in the pudding, as they say, yep. you know. It, it's a beautiful journey. And if you want to teach your children things that you think you're only going to be able to teach on the weekend you know like that doesn't work very well so we, we really had an opportunity to teach them things day right. after day right. you know all throughout the day um if you have any questions that you have that we're not thinking of um you know drop it below i'd love to know what your questions are uh, and i want to add another thing it was a very cool experience to come home from work one day and hear my wife and my three youngest children all speaking Latin to each other. Loyla was teaching them Latin. And I was like, oh, you know, are you kidding me? Like, where did this brilliance come from? I didn't know. Um, and, and they did really well. You know, they did really well. Yeah. Um, all of our kids that have you know, gotten to college age, got scholarships. You know, colleges look at homeschool kids with a very positive eye because if you can be homeschooled and you can get done what you need to do with normally a little bit less supervision, um, it shows you're a good student and, and it, it shows a lot. So, the, the, you know, the, the major universities take homeschooled kids. It's not like, you know, it's not a problem getting in. Um, SAT scores, right? You'll have your, your kids take SATs and, and, yeah. those, and the college is going to look at that. And they're going to ask about your extracurricular activities. What else is, have you done? What makes, what makes you different than the average kid with the average SAT score? Right. And with homeschooling, you just, you just track all the places you've gone to, all of the hobbies the kids have had. Anything you do, you just keep a log of it. 
And boy, over the years, that just adds up to an incredible display of experience and knowledge and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's well-rounded. They see homeschool kids actually as well-rounded. And it's the opposite of what, you know, like, like families think like your kids are going to be so weird and it's like well <laughs> yeah, no right. they're not actually they're going to be a little <laughs> more prepared for the real world because what's weird is you know like i said having 30 10 year olds in a room and and no you know one adult the other thing that's important and and i just want to throw this out there is you know no matter how great a public school teacher is and i had some amazing public school teachers you know i'm not in any way disrespecting that profession they should be paid more than athletes and politicians you know those people should be getting million dollar a year contracts for what they do but um you know one teacher in a classroom with 35 kids that divides the attention and it, you know that kind of means they have to teach towards the slowest kid or the slower kids in the classroom or that kid gets left behind whereas in homeschooling you know, it's usually a parent with, you know, one, two, three, maybe four kids. It's much better. And the older kids help the younger kids if they've been through it. So sometimes you can have two people teaching one person and helping. Okay, stop talking. Sorry. Okay. So I want to answer that question. How were you able to separate mom from teacher for the kids? I love that question because the answer is there is no difference. You are mom and teacher because there is no difference what you say is meaningful mm. you are as mom seen as intelligent and educated and the leader and um they want to learn from you you're it and as teacher you're seen as very caring because you're mom yeah so uh i think the reason why moms who have children in public school are so caught up with that like you know I could never get my kids to listen is because you've separated it because right. you have assigned the teaching role to somebody else and now you're not as mom kids learn okay you know mom you cook you clean you do all the driving but but you don't educate right and um, that's not the case in a homeschooled situation. Great question. Anybody else? We could probably talk here forever, <laughs> honestly. This is so bad. She never invited me on before, so, know. you know. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. Anyway, um, you two are too adorable. <laughs> yeah, we have fun. We, we hate on each other, too. It's, it's not always like this. Never. <laughs> So anyway, and we've never had a fight. <laughs> anyway, I am going to have my children on. I'm going to see who I can rope in to sit with me. So I hope you'll, you know, hang with us again and hear more. Kids need the interaction with other peers. Oh, they totally get interaction with other peers. Um, you know, in church groups, if your kids are involved in the temple or the church, synagogue or whatever, right. um, if they do any extracurricular activities, they're, they have friends from there. Um, other co-ops. I mean, if you're involved in homeschooling, you pretty much want to get together with other homeschooled families because, A, I don't want to teach chemistry and geometry by the time they're in high school. Okay. So I want to get together. We got together with other families who had other strengths, and we all pooled our resources, our, our skill sets. And like for real life example, um, one of our a homeschooling family, the husband was a doctor. And so he would do um, science labs with the kids in their basement, um, you know, cutting open, like you buy these science kits. And, and the father, who was a doctor, would explain brilliantly right. about the biology of, of life and anatomy and all that kind of thing. Right? We had somebody else who was a chemistry teacher in a public school who homeschooled his kids. And so, oh my goodness, the education my kids got with chemistry was untouchable. And also, um, you know, our kids... Um, did ballet, played football. Not the played, boys. Play, right. The boys my didn't daughter, do ballet. My daughter did ballet, but, but, yeah, sorry to be clear. But my sons played football. <laughs> Not that they couldn't. And, but... and um, Little League Baseball, as well as singing in choirs, and Jonathan was in a band, you know. So there, there's a lot where they, they're out with other kids doing a lot of other things. 
And you have a little more flexibility and freedom when you homeschool about getting them in certain places at certain times because, you know, <laughs> you set the schedule. So Great question about patience, Nancy. People have asked me that, oh my gosh, I would never have, or they say I would never have the patience to do that. And I explain it the way it is, which is patience is a muscle. And just like any other muscle, you have to, you need resistance for it to develop. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be tested and challenged and that's how your patience grows. It doesn't, it doesn't, you don't become a patient person because nothing ever goes wrong and challenges right. you. Right. You become a patient person because you're continually challenged and, and you develop the, the strength, the inner fortitude and strength. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the deal. You, you do what you have to do. You become what you need to become. It happens slowly over the course of time and, and everybody grows together. And I think that's one of the, uh, one of, one of the beautiful aspects of homeschooling is that because everybody's dealing with the same pain points and pressures and challenges, you all have to kind of grow in that area together. Yeah. So hopefully we <laughs> answered a number of your questions and uh, this was a lot of fun for me. This was Th fun. Yeah, thanks, thanks for hanging. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> yeah, we should do this again. We will. Yeah. Um, and next time I'll have one of the kids hop on. Oh, see, I'm fired already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the comments, say you want me back. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to ask for them. <laughs> Bye. Bye.